So my last video, I uploaded a bunch of photos into Recap Photo, and it generated this 3D model for me here. I have to download it, so I'm going to go ahead and click on this download icon right here. It's going to ask me where I want to save it, and I have a directory here where I save a lot of my Recap projects. So I'm going to go ahead and make sure I download it there. Create a new folder here. And I'll save it in there. You'll see it will download it. Once it's done downloading, it will show up here as one of the ones on my computer. So I can go ahead and open it up. You can see it doesn't have a preview yet because I haven't opened it. So I'll go ahead and click on this to open it. You see here's my model. If you remember from the last video, I didn't have the auto crop turned on, so I've got a lot of extra information here. That's okay, I can use different selection tools, delete what I don't want. I'm going to use this lasso tool here. You can see I can just click and drag and sweep big areas around here. I usually don't like the lasso tool and other products, but this one works really well. It's going to get the right information and get a lot of it. So there's a lot of selections there. Just hitting the delete key will wipe out a lot of it. I'll kind of start off with bigger areas and kind of drill down a little bit tighter in terms of what I'm trying to eliminate. You can see here the lasso tool works out really nicely. So there's a lot better representation. Don't have all that extra information. I could even use the lasso there. The next thing I like to do is take a look at some of the model settings that I can use here to kind of get it scaled and oriented right. So if I go to transform model here, you can see I can tell it to snap to the origin or rotate around one of the origin axes. The pick a surface is one I, I often use, but you can see it's a little bit tricky because as I hover around, it's going to try faces. It's going to try to be normal or perpendicular to that face. And whatever that direction that arrowhead is pointing, it's going to try to orient the model. So that's pointing directly upwards. You can see as I move around, you can see you get some slight variations. Just try to find one where it looks right. I'll click on that. And it'll orient the model appropriately based off of that setting there. I'll go ahead and apply that one. The other important thing to do is set the scale and the units. So you can see here I can say set units. I'm going to use inches. And I basically can say, well, what two features or two points and what their distance should be apart. So let's say here I know that between this point here on the top and this point over here. So actually we'll, it's going to looking for percentage. I'll give it a value. And it'll wait for me to drop two points. I'll pick this point. I'll pick this point. Now let's say I know that that is, we'll say 16 inches. I'll type in there 16. You can see I can do a percentage, I can do a value. Right now they're locked, uh, at, uh, X, Y, and Z are all the same. So I'll hit set, and it'll scale that all appropriately. Another one that I like to do in terms of the edits is the slice and fill. You can see there's also surface tools that will allow me to try to smooth you see if I got a lot of ripples here, if I go to sculpt or smooth, I usually do smooth. I can set the brush size, how big that is, and how much effect it's going to have. I typically kind of slide these both a little bit further down. But you can see I have this brush here. I can even drop it down a little bit further. As I click and drag and I slide across this, you'll see it's trying to smooth everything inside that brush area. So it is having an effect. It is trying to smooth that out the best it can. I can even try to smooth what would be the tabletop here. 
I'm going to eliminate that from the model eventually here, but just for the time being, I could smooth that. Anything that needs done. And once I've got what I want, I can either discard it or I can commit it. I'll go ahead and commit it. I'll go ahead and close this tool. I can fill holes, I can extrude groups of faces, I can bridge gaps, or I can smooth a boundary. I don't really want to worry about any of those right now. The one I'm going to use next is the slice and fill. What that will do is it'll create a plane in the model, or identify a plane in the model that I can move around, kind of tilt, uh, slide up or down, and then anything on the one side will be eliminated. You can see right now it's kind of got one artificially here. If I zoom out far enough, you can see Here's the plane, and then I have the different axes that I can tilt that on. If I come to this plane here, I can click and drag up. You'll see it's eliminating part of my model over there. I'm going to try to come, so I'm getting just the tabletop taken out. Looks like I, I'm not perfectly flat yet, but I can come to a different vantage point. I can grab this and rotate the tabletop try to eyeball that as best that I can. It's not going to be a perfect um, operation, I don't think, but it's going to be pretty darn close to what you want. I'll just tilt it a little bit more in this direction. That looks pretty good there. Now you can see here I can fill or no fill. So if I say no fill, it's not going to fill in that bottom face. If I say fill, it's going to create a closed object wherever that plane would intersect the model. So it's going to go through slice the model. It might take a few seconds to do that. Now the slice and fill is done. And you can see that if I orbit around here, it's closed in. The bottoms, it didn't really have a coloring to, to kind of follow because it's a new face that's not part of what the, the photos were. But now it's basically a solid model again because we filled those in. So kind of the, the kind of takeaway here is you could use as many of these tools to kind of adjust and clean up the model as much as you want to. There are a lot of other tools here, and I'm not really trying to do a tutorial on all the things you could do here. But those are the things I do most often is I kind of orient it right kind of scale it right, do the slice and fill nine times out of 10 to kind of get rid of some of those other things. And I use these other tools as needed. Um, there's even an analyze there would help you find issues and, and things along those lines. But that's really kind of the bottom line here is you could spend as much or little time as you would like kind of completing those tasks. Now that I have that, I'm going to go up here and save this. And now I'm ready for the next step.